What's up? I'm Hutch, and you need to understand how your patient responds to exercise so that you can better adjust their treatment plan and also pass the NPTE. So there are a few ways to calculate exercise intensity in the moment. One of them is heart rate. And if you want a little bit more background on heart rate, check out this previous video. Otherwise, we'll get into how to calculate target and max heart rate in a little bit. You can also use METs or metabolic equivalents, RPE, RPP to estimate their exercise intensity in the moment. RPP is rate pressure product, and it's an estimate of how strongly and how quickly the heart is beating. It's calculated by multiplying heart rate times the systolic blood pressure. And this is an important thing to mark because patients who have angina or chest pain associated with cardiac pathologies will usually have that chest pain at a similar RPP or rate pressure product each exercise session. So if you can mark at what RPP they're starting to have that angina, you can kind of predict and adjust your exercise so that they don't have that issue during your treatments. RPE is rate of perceived exertion, also known as the Borg or the modified Borg scales. And this is a subjective measure of exercise intensity. It used to be measured on a six to 20 scale as shown here, but more modernly has used the modified Borg scale, which is a zero to 10 measurement and is a little bit easier for people to comprehend in the moment. And this is probably the biggest thing that you want to know for the NPTE because patients that have any kind of cardiac issue, their hearts are not going to respond as they normally would to exercise. And so you can't use things like target heart rate or even RPP. Usually a four or a 14 indicates about 70% of their max heart rate and a two or 11 is the starting maximum for cardiac rehab phase one. So you can kind of use those to gauge where they're at. METs are metabolic equivalent which is the amount of energy it takes your body to sit still or 3.5 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight per minute. One to two METs is very light activity, sitting still, driving, a really slow walk. Three to six METs is more moderate activity. So this is anywhere from a little bit faster of a walk to cooking, gardening, all the way up to biking 12 miles per hour. Seven to 11 METs is usually more vigorous activity, shoveling, sprinting, playing a game of basketball, basketball, running at about seven miles per hour. And that's usually about where people max out. But for athletes who are higher trained, they can get to 15 to 20 mets. In order to actually figure out what your maximum metabolic equivalents are, you'd have to perform an exercise test. But if you do that, you can calculate your target exercise intensity for a session by doing anywhere from 40 to 80% of your max metabolic equivalents minus your resting metabolic equivalents. Back to heart rate. Heart rate is the easiest way to try to figure out your exercise intensity. You can calculate your maximum heart rate by just taking the number 220 minus your age in years. You can calculate your target heart rate by taking anywhere from 55 to 90 percent of your max heart rate. You could do your resting heart rate plus 20 or you could do your heart rate reserve which uses a Carvonin formula which is 40 to 80 percent of your max heart rate minus your resting heart rate and then add your resting heart rate back in. The percentage that you're going to look at is going to be based on your exercise goals, but most people have a watch or can track their heart rate pretty easily now, and so they can adjust their exercise to make sure they're in that target zone. Acutely, which means within one session of exercise, your heart rate will increase, your respiratory rate will increase, your systolic blood pressure will increase, usually anywhere from 8 to 12 millimeters of mercury per met. Your diastolic blood pressure usually doesn't change, or it may decrease slightly. A significant change in diastolic blood pressure is abnormal and may indicate early signs of a stroke or that a stroke may be imminent if you continue exercising. Over time, aerobic exercise can actually help improve some of your vitals. It can increase your VO2 max, your oxidative capacity of your muscles, it'll increase the number of mitochondria and capillaries, and it'll help with thermoregulation. This can also decrease your resting heart rate, lactate, fat, anxiety, and depression, and possibly your blood pressure over time. Now it's time for NPT Jeopardy. Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise, you've got five, four, three, two, one. Systolic blood pressure increases eight to 12 millimeters of mercury for each met for a given activity. This averages out to about a 30 millimeter of mercury increase. Hopefully that covers all of our bases. If not, you can always check out the description box below for a link to my notes. Otherwise, you can comment with questions or suggestions for videos I should do in the future. 
Good luck studying. Go change the world.